Hello YouTubers, we are back and the quick change tool post has been installed. Uh, that amounted to uh, removing this post, this post which was the original post and this bottom piece was on here and now everything is on here so I'll, I'll do two things i'll show you what i did to make sure that uh, um, the post was adjusted correctly uh, once it's locked down and then i thought i'd uh, demonstrate this interesting little protractor in terms of uh how accurate so there's nothing against this scale that tells me other than my assumption that you know if this mark right here is the zero mark or or is a reference point of zero meaning this dash at zero doesn't move uh yet this moves so we always have a zero here so if i'm gonna just you know extend this line forward to say okay zero so we should be at a uh 20 some odd degree angle here because this is 30 degrees and this little so here's 40 degrees here's 30 degrees here's 20 degrees so according to this i'm at like 25 degrees but wait there's more so if you take and now with the with everything in the way so if you take this card that or this side of it and you have it flush against the face of the chuck you know like this and i've got some uh, one two three blocks that are coming okay so uh, flush against here flush against there gives me 59 degree angle i would believe this is 59 degrees more than i would believe it's 20 some odd degrees because a 20 you know if this is 20 let's say that's 25 a 25 degree angle is kind of like like that so this thing would have to come over a lot more uh, unless you know uh, unless i'm doing it wrong or reading it wrong and you know this this particular angle yeah, I just can't see, uh, you know, I'm, I keep coming up at 59, almost 60, again, depending on how close I have that to flush on the, uh, on the, uh, yeah, I keep coming up at 59 degrees. So uh, if I'm doing that wrong, let me know. But uh, that's kind of where I'm coming at. Uh, the tool post, again, uh, what I did was I uh, set it on this side locked it and then brought it over to the uh to the tailstock actually i'll just move the tailstock over so when you move this uh let's see let me move it a little let's see if it still lines up That is pretty darn close. Uh, let me reposition the camera so that you can see when I bring the tailstock a little bit closer. Actually, let me lock that right about there. So that's locked. And if I bring this right there and I put this a little... Still getting used to everything. Okay, let me back that off a little bit. All 
Okay. I will uh, try and move this live so you know I'm not tinkering. Oh, there's an easy way to do this. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you can see right here. There is my dead center and there is the tip of my cutter. So that tells me uh, because when I move the live, uh, move the dead center to uh, the center of the chuck, it looks like it lines up. We'll, we'll see how we'll see how that works. But uh, from my point of view, I'm going to say that things are uh, pretty set. So by taking this up and moving it over here and locking it down. Uh, I should be uh, good to go to cut, again, depending on uh, what I'm cutting, what angle, all that good stuff. Um, and I'm still debating whether I cut something real time because uh, the, uh, the fact that the camera is usually right in the middle of everything like it is right now, it's right in front of me, that's a little more challenging to do. I will say that I did try and failed. Let me move the camera back. Uh, right here was a tapped uh, and a drill and tapped hole. It wasn't all the way through. Uh, it, it was all the way through, but I couldn't put this six millimeter hex bolt all the way through. So I did take a tap and tapped it to be able to thread all the way through. I don't know what this is for. Uh, all the carriage locks that I've seen have uh, additional screws, uh, like right here and somewhere else. Um, so maybe, maybe this is, you know, these two screws are for something to lock the carriage. Uh, I've not, the saddle carriage, whatever it's called. I've not uh, found anything uh, to do that. Uh, I tried myself, uh, cut a piece of 1 8 steel. Uh, drilled and tapped it, thinking, uh, and it's sized to fit. It is sized to fit uh, exactly between the sides of the lathe, so you can see that it grabs the bottom of the bed. And the idea was to use this particular hex bolt, uh, but you know, even though I thread it and I thread it on the bottom of this piece of steel to try and draw the piece of steel up, I can get it to be tight, but I can't get it to completely stop the movement of, uh, of the carriage. So uh, I've kind of given up on that idea. It didn't cost me anything in terms other than my time in terms of uh, any damage or well, anything, even the the bolt came from the old tool post holder. I did pick up a couple of uh, longer slash different six millimeter, different being different head. Um, this this particular um, six millimeter has this throat, which won't let it go all the way into the hole. Uh, it stops at that uh, right around there, and uh, it doesn't matter what what I uh, what I screw on to this, uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> so that's uh, I'll call that my first failed lathe tooling attempt. There will be more, but wait, there will be more. So um, again, I'm enjoying the whole learning process. Uh, the adjusting, the cleaning, the tinkering, kind of like uh, uh, picked up. Uh, I forget whose idea this was. Picked it up online so that uh, to have a tray, a tray under the tray, so there's a quicker way to to dump shavings and chips and shit. Because the likelihood of me needing this particular tray back towards the tailstock is probably uh, negligible considering this is where all the cutting and most of the action's happening because I don't believe I'd be using, you know, anything 
super, super long that I'm coming out here to lade all my projects, uh, at least that I've uh, said, I'm going to say over the years, wish I had a lathe, very small things, you know, stuff like modifying screws, drilling through, um, you know, gun parts, little, little miscellaneous pieces. Here's my whey oil. Again, you know, is it really what it's supposed to be uh, according to that, uh, that bottle? Who knows, but uh, any oil is, uh, is what I'm going to say is better than no oil. So, you know, is it uh, ISO 068 compliant? Uh, again, I don't know. So, uh, you know, things are taking shape, um, starting to happen. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm uh, ready to almost make stuff. I guess I can start uh, putting uh, some of these pieces back together that uh, I won't be needing or won't be using. Uh, I won't be saying won't be needing, but uh, don't 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 need at the present time, based on uh, you know what I'm currently doing or what I think I'm going to be doing. And uh, I'll probably stop rambling right about now. And uh, when there's some new stuff, I'll make uh, yet another video. But uh, now I'm just tinkering with uh, some of what I'm going to call the accessories and upgrades um, like I did with uh, and I don't know why that won't go in right now but it won't so we will just leave it there uh, like I did with the tool post so I'll probably clean these um, I don't like having a, a wrench with a socket so I'll probably uh, look for you know uh, a size 17 wrench because none of the wrenches that came with the kit, uh, you know, will uh, will loosen this so that I can move this around uh, to either if I have uh, two different cutters um, or uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something uh, that need to, need this to be adjusted. Because uh, it's, it's almost easier to adjust this than it is to adjust this because adjusting this means I have to... Uh, slide this back to two hex bolts and loosen those then adjust uh, the, uh, the the saddle or the carriage or whatever this particular component's called uh, so it might be easier uh, just to maneuver this uh, and then tighten that down so again more learning uh, <laughs> definitely more to come later all right youtubers the next i'll call it a mini wave or maybe I should call this the UPS wave, the non-blue delivery truck, the brown delivery truck, the brown Santa. And hopefully these, again, are not Christmas gifts, so nobody gets surprised. These feel like the 250 zero, zero somethings. Zero, zero, 001, zero, zero, 002, something, something. This is telltale Chinesium packing. All right, uh, so whatever they are, they're the same thing. But it's in different packaging than any other thing I've received. So I think that's interesting. See, Chinese cardboard is like not even cardboard. It's, I'm going to call it brown paper. It's very similar to brown paper. Wow, that looks fucking tiny. Yeah, those those might be going back. Well, maybe not. All right, maybe I'm an idiot. <clears throat> it's been a long day. I 
Eh, it looks the same. Okay, I'm the idiot here. I just thought the base was thicker. I'm an idiot. I'll admit. All right, so 25002, two of the 25002s. And I believe this is I think it's funny they go through all this effort to seal this when somebody could just open this like that. <laughs> I just, the humor I find in things. Yep. Yeah, it's going through the bottom. Okay, so I guess it doesn't matter. You're still going to have to to cut. All right, so this is a die cam marker. I was debating, because I don't do enough work, metal work, uh, on the lathe or anywhere else for that matter. Uh, I don't do enough to justify, you know, a, a bottle, an 8 or 12 ounce bottle of this, this material. So I thought I'd just, all right, so uh, this was my second, this is my first, so let's, I'm guessing it's shake, depress, let's see, mm -hmm. keep out of reach, da -da 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 blue medium nylon all right so there's really no directions not that i need them but i'm sure somebody will be like you're not doing it right dude there we go starting to saturate getting closer Ooh, we're almost there. And we are there. All right, so the idea behind this was to, you know, if I was going to mark something, that seems like it's really heavy. That might take a while to dry. And we will stand this up. goes on kind of thick at least right there uh, obviously on the knurling not so much uh, and I probably put it on a little heavier than I needed to so again uh, good for marking So, does what it's does what it's supposed to do. Cool. Uh, versus uh, a big can of it. Again, I don't do enough, and maybe I will get a can of it at some point. But this was enough for a starter uh, starter method. Or I can just use a because somebody will say this. Why don't you just use a marker? This is an expensive marker and it's cooler, that's why. <sighs> Works just as good. 
All right, more uh, to come. I think uh, the next set of trucks are going to be from uh, the rainforest. Not sure when they will or won't show up. Um, and then what I'll probably do is F around with this and turn this some more since this was one, this is two, so now this will be three. More to come. And we are back. We're going to call this a big wave. A big wave of... Uh, arrivals uh, we'll just start unbagging Let's see what this Chineseium is uh, made in China this is I believe this is the tailstock chuck Tailstock chuck. A box within a box. All right, I'm gonna. I'm thinking this is the the thingy bob. The thingy bob whose name escapes me right at this exact moment. Uh, the MT2. Ouch. And yes, this is the Chuck. So we will that aside. Actually, let me set it. Uh, let's get this box out. That's cool. They don't put tape on the bottom, you just put it on the top. So, this big ass box for that wrench. My stubby 17 millimeter craftsman wrench. This big ass box. <laughs> Why not a bag? Why not a bag like this? Because this, whatever's in here, is as heavy as this. So I'm going to step away from the camera and just see if this fits. We'll see if it fits together. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Very cool. So, and I like the fact that it's a stubby as opposed to the big, long 12-inch. Or 8-inch. Or whatever size that particular wrench was. Okay, this is another big box, big size box with... Not a lot in it. So when I was ordering, I would find stuff I'm like, yeah, I think I could use that. Yeah, I think I could use that. Yeah, I think I could use that. And again, some of this might be for Christmas. Oh, yep, this is uh, totally nothing to do with this hobby. It just happened to be other Amazon stuff that is of no interest to this video. Once I read the label. Let's see what this one is. This one feels lathy related. And this is another tool holder. I don't know why they uh, sent them all differently because they were ordered at the same time. So I don't know what to say to that. Other than that's how they run their shipping business. So I will have to check all my orders and see what has or hasn't arrived. This was a 250-002.
see what this one is. Ah, this is my red oiling can that, as you can see, is fucking not red. Oh my effing god, these guys are... Time to get my money back. <laughs> it's, I'm, I, don't, I don't have words for this. Fucking idiots. In fact, I am going to print... And I'm going to add, I'm, in, in a few minutes, I'm going to go inside, print it, and, and show it to you. It's just absolutely ridiculous. All right, I know what these are because they're heavy. These are the one, two, three blocks. And this will come in handy with uh, other hobbies besides uh, metalworking. So these are one inch by two inch by three inch perfectly square uh, that I will oil and uh, oil and clean that I will clean of all the oil and it comes with a cute little handy dandy box the last thing of this wave of goodies these are called center drill bits that uh, is taped shut that will go with that chuck that you just saw a short while ago and I will leave them in there all right that is a wrap for tonight and I think this is just hilarious. I'll be right back with the printout. Back in a few. Putting this piece of shit to bed. All right. So this is what was ordered. And you notice how it's a nice shiny red where this looks like it's textured black. Again, I got nothing wrong with black. But this isn't what I wanted. This wasn't what I ordered. This is what I ordered because this is what I wanted. I, you know, I'm partial to red. Look at all the red I have everywhere. And it's not like there was an option to choose black or red, and I accidentally chose black. Performance tool, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Precision pump oiler, blah, 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 blah. Red. Red. Not red or black. Red. Only red. Picture red. Description red. Let's see if there's a uh, if it says red in here. <laughs> oh, look! Red color. The vibrant red of this oiler makes it easy to spot in your toolbox. I would agree with that. Everything about this is red. So I thought when they sent the black one on a previous video, I thought, you know, maybe there was a bin with red and a bin with black and the robot, you know, accidentally picked the black. So when I did the replace with same item, I was assuming because there is no option for black that it would be red this time. I was wrong. Unfucking believable. So uh, I've already requested my money back and... Uh, uh, what's interesting is the return options are not Whole Foods, which has been, you know, down the street, uh, an easy way to return. Um, it's not Kohl's, which is, again, down the street, easy to return. Uh, they gave me an option to take it to Petco, as in the pet company, pet store, Petco, that they give me a 10% coupon if I return it to Petco. The nearest Petco is like 30 miles from me, uh, or let, let me rephrase that. The Petco that is closest to me is unselectable. I would have to drive 30 miles to the only Petco that Amazon is directing me towards, even when I fill in my zip code and everything to get my local-ish Petco. So Amazon, what the fuck? Yeah, that's going back. So...
Um, we will now be searching for uh, a, a different version of this uh, oiler, uh, or not, uh, because we're we're not doing threes of charm with uh, with our friends at Amazon on this particular item. So that's going in the garbage later. Okay, fellow reloaders and uh, burgeoning machinists, the delivery waves are decreasing, diminishing. This, uh, I believe, is uh, lathe machining related. Again, things have the schedule of uh, when it's supposed to come in and when it actually does because of all the holiday and such uh, I'm not sure what this is uh, this is the uh, spindle dead center so tailstock dead center and spindle dead center and this is an MT4 dead center much bigger than the tailstock dead center which has quite a point to it you've got a point there so we will keep this box to hold it in uh, that's what it looks like and that goes in the spindle and hopefully uh, with this in the spindle and then the dead uh, center in the tailstock, the two will create a nice point. We will test that theory later. Last, last opening of today. Not quite sure what this is. This is uh, 21 pieces of something, hard to tell, but we know where it's made, and it's apparently new. So that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, you can tell I've gone a little crazy and overboard with the holiday laid shopping. The gearing up, so the, uh, the person who said, uh, I have found a great new way to separate my wallet from me uh, I'm still not sure what that is ah okay I ordered a bunch of metals uh, to play with uh, and obviously well, I guess size doesn't matter um, this was uh, they looked a lot bigger in the picture but I guess uh, again it's not about size so obviously that's brass uh, this feels light, uh, but not as light as this. So this would be the aluminum, and this would be the steel. And the idea behind these were to, is to, was to start practicing some of my cutting and skills. And uh, let me take a pause here, and I'll bring out uh, the little piece of steel, the hard steel, the the, the uh, cold rolled steel, I think it was called, uh, that I bought a long last time ago as part of the va uh, the vice restoration for to make one of the pins. But let me grab that, and I'll show you. So if you remember, uh, this was originally side one. Then I messed around with knurling and some very 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 rudimentary facing and uh, now this so this was number two and number one became number three so I started uh, experimenting with different speeds and again I'm not there because doing the nail test I can still feel the ridges and whatnot uh, much better on the facing on that side than that side uh, again hard to I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up and uh, that particular well that's kind of gunky this damn this stuff right here looks like there's damage in the steel so I didn't do that but that is my surfacing 
or my facing or whatever it's called. Uh, so I guess if I cut uh, even lower, that would get uh, rid of uh, whatever these marks are. Uh, they're not my tooling marks. Looks like uh, what I would call, if this was a piece of wood, this would be a knot or an inclusion. Um, but this looks a heck of a lot better than that did. So my skills are so improving. And then uh, I used uh, whatever those funky things were called. Uh, let me clean that out a little bit with a dirty Q-tip. So, uh, hang on one second. I'll grab what I did here. So I was exploring and experimenting with cutting with the center drill bits. And then after I cut a little bit with the center drill bit, uh, I actually took a drill. Uh, and I was told on one machinist video, you don't say drill bit, so... The actual, what used to be called a drill bit in my world, is now a drill. And uh, use the chuck in the tailstock. And then uh, slowly drill that at right around 500 RPM to, uh, to get that hole that is now uh, about a quarter of an inch deep. Deeper than uh, the 60, or, or very close to the 60% mark of... Uh, of that uh, center drill bit, but again, experimenting with different parts of the uh, of the lathe in terms of functionality, and uh, I'm curious if the work that I've done on this piece, because this is such hard steel, what that will mean on. I'm assuming the brass and aluminum will be much easier to cut and look a lot better than this piece of hard steel. And then I'll do the same thing, you know, on this piece, you know, one of these pieces of steel. So, um, as I've said before, definitely more to come. So hopefully, maybe with a little more light, you can see that uh, those two points are essentially touching. So we have the MT4 taper in the spindle. We have the MT2 in the tailstock. And I will back this off. So that nothing hits. Very cool. I don't know why that's so exciting, but it is. <laughs> More learning later.